we all love to have plant mail, don't we? We get a lot of plants in from all of the nurseries all over the place, but when we get plants in, we don't just take that plant and put it in with our other stuff without checking it first. Checking for bugs, fungus, most of the time when stuff comes in through UPS or FedEx or the post office, it's a mess. Just like sometimes it is for the person receiving plants from us or any other place. Depends on how they're handling it through there. When we get plants in on a truck, the stuff sits on trays and comes in really nice and there's less damage and everything else. But we get a lot of damage when we get stuff in too. We just have to contend with it, deal with it, fix the plants, make them work, do what we have to do to make them so that they have a better chance of survival. Because anything that comes through the mail or shipped in any way, you're always taking a gamble on buying that way. So When you say you're taking a gamble, you mean like something could end up with like a broken leaf or yeah, like or a could stem could break it could get or lost in the mail okay. there's a lot of different reasons that could come about that um we have on our website that says if you want the plant to receive the plant like it was when it left here call your local airline and book a ticket so because realistically that's the only way you can get the plant guaranteed to be there because once it leaves us we have really no control of that plant as much as we wanted to get there as best as perfect as it can we do our best packages to make it right so but anyway, so you get your plant, it's just arrived in the mail, you unpack it. We have a lot of tape in ours, so we ask that you use scissors or a knife to cut it out and don't rip it out because you'll break more stuff. Why do you use a lot of tape? I don't want it to move in the box. So we try to tape everything down nice and solid so that it stays. So when the post office says the guy's carrying his packages and it drops, when that box falls, do you think that he's going to keep walking and carry the rest and walk back to get that. No, that box now becomes a football and it's gonna go right down the aisle until it gets to where it's going. They don't care what it is. They're just there to do a job. It doesn't matter if it says fragile. Fragile means nothing and it's it's thrown in the bottom of pallets and bins. You don't, we don't know where it's going or how it's going. So we do the best we can to make sure it gets there. A lot of our boxes come in crushed and people say, I can't believe the plants survived this, but look how nice they are. And there's a few here and there that say, my plants got crushed and they look horrible. Unfortunately, that's just how it is when you're doing plant mail. Do you offer any kind of insurance for the plants? Like, No, there's no way we can do it. We no. used to try to cover stuff for people. Yeah. The post office has now quit doing insurance on plants because it's a perishable item. Oh, okay. So right now it's kind of buy at your own risk, unfortunately. Okay. All right, so somebody, say somebody gets their package, uh, it comes, you know, fine. Maybe it has a one broken leaf or something small. They uncut all the tape that you put in it to hold it together, you know, to make sure it doesn't get bounced around. Right. And then what do they need to do as soon as they open the box and take it out, what do they need well, to do? Well, you're gonna check it for water, uh, make sure it doesn't need water. Sometimes the plants will be wet anyways. Sometimes people think they're overly wet. When plants get watered different times of the day, get pulled different times of the day. So sometimes the plants just got watered when they ship. We make sure that when the plants leave, there's no reason that it should die because of overwatering. There's things that you should take in precaution, and we're gonna go over this in a minute, on how to take care of the plants to this point. I like to describe this, um, when you get a new plant, we don't just incorporate them with our other plants that we have immediately. So I like to use the idea of a tiger at the zoo. They, let's say the local zoo brings in a tiger from China. The vet checked the tiger, the tiger is fine. Nothing wrong with it. The tiger flies over to the United States, goes into the zoo, the, the zoo does not take that tiger and stick him with the other tigers or even beside him in another cage because some people would say, well, he'll, they'll get into a fight. They have to check for, make sure they get along. But I'm, I'm going to the issue of any diseases that may have developed between when the vet checked it to when it arrived at the zoo. It's, it could end up with a cold, it could end up with a lot of different things, stress travel, uh, anything like that. So the zoo is gonna quarantine that animal for a certain amount of time, whether it's a week, three days, three weeks, who knows what they have to do with their their different animals on what they're getting. But they do not just throw it in with the other, the other group of animals. You know, the same thing with your plant. This is a living thing. Bugs eat plants. You're not gonna stop bugs. As much as people say, oh, I got a bug on here. It's okay that you got a bug. They're very easy to take care of, not hard to do. It, people go overboard and make it seem like it's such a, a hassle when they have a bug on there that they have to throw the plant away. Um, if your dog has fleas, do we throw the dog away? No, we don't. We treat the dog for fleas and take care of it. If you treat your plant, you'll be fine. But if you're going to try to treat your dog with Dawn soap to take rid of the fleas, it might kill some of the fleas, but it's not going to kill all the fleas. So you have to decide, do I want to kill the bug or do I want to just kind of perish them away? Another thing I see on Facebook a lot, and please find a video for this one, is washing the bugs off.
So when we wash the bugs off, where do they go? Hmm, they're eventually gonna come back or end up on your other plants. So we wanna kill the bugs. If you have mosquitoes in your house, do you, take a, do you say open the door and say, come on mosquito, let's go outside. No, we take spray and we spray the mosquitoes to try to get them out of the house, kill them. The, we don't want these bugs on our plants that are inside. So you're so just out here murdering bugs left and right? Honestly, we don't do that much killing here because we try to, we're being butterfly friendly and we have a really good ecosystem going right now. We have centipedes, we have ladybugs, we have uh, the geckos, and a bunch of other things that eat the bugs. And by the way, centipedes are beneficial. A lot of people have been complaining lately because they see a centipede in our plants. Mm -hmm. They eat bugs. So I'm not gonna go kill centipedes just like I'm not gonna go kill butterflies or the larvae of butterflies or ladybugs. But we have a pretty good ecosystem through here. We don't have to spray very much. If we do have to spray, we always spray in the evening time at sunset, so hopefully the bees are gone home. Um, we do use a little bit more powerful chemical to kill the stuff because I want to kill it. I'm not looking to save it for a long time. The stuff we use is a, is a systemic, which means it goes into the plant and stays within the plant for four to six weeks. So it will kill anything that's hatching new for a little bit of time. You probably won't even see it because it'll kill it while it's little. And it's not going to... when. The bug eats this stuff, it's not going to kill it immediately on the first bite. The stuff that we spray, anything that gets on the, the bug itself, will kill it immediately pretty much. But it'd be more like a rat poison for the new ones that hatch. They're going to start eating the plant, it's going to be a poison, and it'll slowly kill them. I don't know if it takes six hours or three days, but they won't get to any size where you'll probably even notice that they're there. So anyway, so we bring a new plant in, let's go with the begonia. For instance, this begonia just came in, not really. But we try to check it for bugs before it goes out. We look under the leaves, make sure everything's good, nothing down towards the bottom, no mealy bugs. But sometimes it'll happen and sometimes we'll miss it too. But if once I spray the chemical on here, this would kill any mold that might be growing on here. Because when we get these in, we'll just still check them all through. I usually would wear gloves for this if I was a homeowner at the top to get that. So this here has a fungicide and a bug control in it. We Which use, are those two things right. there? And we use the seven because the seven kills pretty much and works. Um, you can use it on edibles if you want to. A lot of people think that they shouldn't. Um, people don't want to spray stuff because they're afraid of killing the bees and stuff like that. We didn't eradicate the bees because we did controlled spraying. We eradicated the bees to this point because we took airplanes over fields of crops Crop it's dusting. sprayed all the time, not yeah. just spraying, spotting areas that need to be done. And obviously when you say we, you're not talking about you, you're saying in general as the human race, right. as the exactly. general population. So people get paranoid when they say, well, I don't want to use that stuff because I don't want to kill the bees. I understand where you're going, but first of all, the bees are supposed to go home at sunset. So if you spray after sunset, that gives you about a half hour. That's the only time that we spray. Even in the greenhouses, it's the only time that we spray because the bees can still come in and out of here. We never spray in the morning, even though online it can say, oh, you can spray in the morning or late evening. But if you're spraying in the morning, your leaves are gonna be wet, the bees come out, their legs are gonna get that stuff on them, and you have a chance of killing the bees. So we wanna do everything in our possible, possible power to make sure we protect the species we wanna protect, but still take care of the species that need to be taken care of. Okay. Some bugs are okay because sometimes we need it in certain areas. So we try to just hold it off as long as we can so that we can try to keep the beneficials here. And it's a full cycle. There's other stuff that's eating the ladybugs and eating the lizards and everything else, but we have all that different stuff here. So, so right now we got this plant in. This is a mixture of fungicide and bug control. Even though I see no bugs on here and I don't see any signs of any active fungus, which would be black spots that are actively, it'd be wet black spots. Not just wet because you unpacked it and the plants were wet, but just you can almost tell when it's rotting away. That's what uh, fungus is. So fungus will always develop too right at the base of the plant. So we'll make sure when we spray this, we spray this really good at the base. So I got this all shaken. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray underneath the leaves really good. And I'm going to spray on top of the leaves. Then because this is a, a systemic, which can be absorbed to the root system, I'll also spray a little bit down here and that will allow that to absorb. Even when I water it again next time, it'll still absorb again. Most of the directions for this will say you can just water the root system. I still want to spray the underside of the leaves. That's where most of your bugs are going to hang out. Now it's going to leave a white residue on here. You can go ahead and um, wipe it off in a few days if you want because it will be within the plant 
works. Some people, it bothers them to see that white residue in there. When we go back, if we go back to these chemicals and stuff like that, everybody's gonna try different stuff and they feel like they gotta use neem because neem is safer or whatever. But neem has to be broken down with a soap in order for it to actually work properly too. Because mm -hmm. um, otherwise you have these five droplets of neem in your water, but it's not getting onto your plant. So some of the process stuff that's gonna be done by the factories will be a little bit better, but I don't like to use neem because I don't get a good kill. It's like using the soap. I get a partial or a decent amount. And neem is not a fungicide, even though they say it helps probably, but it's not a fungicide. Well, I use cinnamon. Well, that's fine what you use, but I want to make sure I kill the fungus. Yeah, you can do holistic. You can do all natural things, but you're not going to have the same result as you are from a chemical compound. Right, and uh, there's a lot of stuff that's organic. You can use um, liquid copper is a fungicide and works very well, and that's an organic. Uh, if this plant, let's say, got um, white flies or mealybugs or something, I'm not going to spray that plant. I have to spray this whole area right here, and I've got to check the outer areas because they are going to spread out there. They just like the flea analogy. If this has, if this is a dog with fleas, and these are its buddies, these fleas aren't going to stay on this one dog. They're going to jump to the buddies and go to new homes. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Right. They have wings. They're going to move. Right. So they're not going to stay there. And if you think you can't get bugs in your house because um, all your plants have always been inside, I'm sorry. Have you ever had ants in your house? Have you ever had a mosquito? This is what they eat. Something's going to come in to eat it. You put a chicken loose in your yard and leave it loose all the time. Eventually, something's going to come and eat that loose chicken. Yeah. He may live there for five years without any issues. But one day, something's going to come get it if you leave it out there loose. Yeah. So you're going to have an issue at some point. You need to be prepared to take care of it. You can use this kind of stuff as a preventative. So if you did this every, like twice, I mean every two months, you would probably be fine. Fungicide, once a month. The big, huge growers spray probably once a month automatically the whole greenhouse on a schedule so they don't usually have a problem but believe me i've had some stuff that comes in from the large growers that they miss something and you end up with a bunch of mealies or something like that so we always try to check this stuff as it comes in to make sure it's it's good and set to come into the mix of the rest of the stuff but it's going to happen at some point or another so um, when we send out the instructions that this is what you should do it's not because we have bugs it's because this is what you should do. You should put that tiger, give him a shot of penicillin and put him in quarantine for a week. Everything looks good. Move it into the thing. And honestly, if you probably sprayed this down, left it out for overnight, because you can spray this on your porch and then bring the plant in. It doesn't have any scent to it. Um, so it's not really going to hurt anything. When you live up in, in the north, you don't have as much of a bug problem because they have the cold and the freezes that kind of knock them back. Here in Florida, we have bug problem. There's nothing that kills the bug. So we have to spray them. So if you're someone in Florida growing your garden and you say, well, I'm gonna try to keep 100% organic, that's fine, it's a lot of work, you can do that. If it's organically grown, I asked the Department of Agriculture, what is the law about organically grown? He said that they're organically grown. But if they're having a problem with something and they have to put another chemical on it to take care of something, they're allowed to do that as long as they document it and they're still considered organic because they're certified organic. And the other thing I will tell you, never buy pre-mix. Pre-mix is always uh, mix at the, the smallest concentration that they can so it's not going to take care of some of your harder to kill bugs like the mealies or the uh, scale it'll take care of aphids so you need to buy concentrate you need to follow the instructions don't say oh i'm going to give it extra double dose don't do that either because then you'll burn your plant always follow the instructions on the thing usually i say if you mix it for mealies or scale that will cover all the bugs that you have to worry about for anything let it dry then you can bring it back inside as if you're warming up the spray outside so that was the chemicals to me is one of the most important things that people need to understand. Okay. So any other questions? That's a good one. What's a good one? This one. Oh. This is the important one.